At some point in late 2017, after carrying various striker-fired pistols and double-action revolvers in an appendix position, I started looking at some hammer-fired traditional double-action autoloaders, thinking that maybe it would bridge the gap between the modern function of my Glocks and the longer, heavier trigger pull of my double-action revolvers that I tend to prefer for concealed carry. I owned several SIGs in a CZ P07, but was never able to find anything that really lent itself to being carried every day. I wanted a small single stack with a double action single action trigger and did not want to buy a gun from Springfield Armory. Somewhere along the way, I found the Smith & Wesson 3913. I purchased a couple of 3913 police trade-ins in mid-2018 to potentially adopt the platform as my primary carry gun. The 3913 is part of Smith & Wesson's third generation of semi-autos and was introduced in the late 1980s and then removed from production in 1999. It's a single-stack DASA pistol with a lightweight aluminum frame, a stainless steel slide and barrel, a wrap-around plastic grip with a straight back strap, and an ambidextrous slide-mounted decocker and safety. The pistol also has a magazine safety, which disconnects the trigger when the magazine is removed. Magazine capacity is 8 plus 1. It has Novak low-mount sights that are drift-adjustable for windage. Empty weight is 25 ounces and overall length is 6.8 inches. Slide width is approximately 0.925 inches, width of the grip is 1.075 inches, and width of the safety levers is 1.4 inches. To get a sense of the size of the 3913, we'll look at it next to a Glock 19, one of the most popular carry pistols ever made. Being a smaller frame person, the idea of a single stack as a carry gun appeals to me greatly. For daily use, capacity is not a huge concern for me, although I do like to carry a pistol that is compact enough to conceal effectively while still being a firearm that I can take to the range and put a few hundred rounds through for a practice session and not have it be painful, and one that I can shoot with relative accuracy out to 25 yards. This is one of the reasons why the 3913 stood out to me. It seemed to strike a balance between shootability and concealability. Ergonomically, I like the feel of the 3913 right from the get-go. One of my pistols had the stock Smith & Wesson grip, and the other had the slightly more substantial rubber grip from Hogue, and both felt very good in my hands. I am somewhere between a small and a medium glove size, so switching to a single stack from something like a Glock 19 is always an eye-opener, in terms of being able to reach all the controls without adjusting my grip. The decocker and safety took a little getting used to, as the other traditional double-action pistols I have owned, the P07 and the Sig P229, featured a decocker only, so I had to spend a good amount of time practicing the up and down motion to decock and put the pistol off safe before it became second nature. It pointed naturally, and I didn't notice any issues coming from that really familiar Glock grip angle. Shooting the 3913 has been fairly enjoyable. In terms of recoil impulse, I would put it about halfway between a Glock 19 and a 43. I wouldn't describe it as too snappy, but you're aware you're shooting a relatively small gun. In terms of the trigger, it certainly is not bad, but it's not much to write home about either. The double action was heavy and long as expected, and the single action was crisp, but not quite revolver crisp. It is perfectly usable, and maybe this isn't the most popular stance ever, but I don't get too hung up on trigger pull with a carry gun as long as it's not gritty. I'm much more concerned with reliability. In my mind, you can train yourself to use most triggers effectively. Reliability of the 3913 has been 100%. I purchased new recoil springs from Midway USA when I first purchased these pistols and replaced them before firing around, and since these were police guns with a decent amount of mileage on them, I run them very wet using my standard lubricant choice of wheel bearing grease. I had no issues running a variety of ammunition, from 115 and 124 grain Magtech ball, uh, 115 grain Winchester white box, 124 grain spear gold dots, and 147 grain Federal HST, which was chosen for my carry load. I would estimate that I have about 650 rounds through each of my 3913s and have had no problems whatsoever. Accuracy seems on par with most modern pistols that I've owned. I was able to get some tight groups from 25 yards off the rest with a single action trigger, but I typically don't spend a lot of time trying to ring out bullseye accuracy of a carry gun. Freestyle groups at 25 yards are more than acceptable, and I was able to keep everything on a B8 target easily, which is good enough for me. In terms of sights, 3.0 Novaks work just fine. 
Since the pistol hasn't been in production for years, there are very few aftermarket options anyways, and I don't mind the three dot style. I did black out the rear sights on one of the pistols just to experiment, but notice little difference in performance between the two. During the time I was carrying a 3913, I used a couple appendix holsters from JM Custom Kydex, a George and a Wingclaw model. Unfortunately, Tony from JM no longer has molds for this model, so I had to find them on the used market, and holsters seem to be getting harder to find. Both of these holsters work great for daily carry and offered great concealment and comfort. What ultimately led me to stop carrying the 3913 was the simple fact that it's a platform no longer in production and no longer supported by Smith & Wesson. Parts are hard to find, and if you break something, Smith & Wesson will likely offer you a discounted M&P model. Magazines are still out there, and I was able to find some spare parts on Midway USA, but as I said before, if I'm going to carry a pistol, I'm going to put a lot of rounds through it, and I feel a lot more comfortable using a pistol that I can easily source parts for and contact the manufacturer with any issues. Overall, the 3913 is an awesome gun, and I personally think Smith & Wesson should make it again. It seems there is a need for a single-stack, hammer-fired option now that SIG is no longer making the P239. I would certainly purchase one if they chose to do so. Prices on the 3913 are steadily rising, so if you find a good deal on one in good shape, I would highly recommend picking one up.